In this tutorial, I'll teach you how you can change the appearance of your character based on the equipment you equip it with. Let's get started. Before we dive into the code, we have to talk assets. And we're gonna talk assets for the particular technique that I'll be using in this video. Do know that there are multiple ways to go about changing the appearance of your character. The method that I'm gonna be teaching you in this tutorial is a little bit more old school. It's the same method that the guys of Blizzard used when they created Diablo 2. On the right of me here, you'll see a couple of sprite sheets. We have a sprite sheet for the head, the armor, the main hand and the off hand. These sprite sheets are not hand-drawn. Sorry to break it to you, Diablo 2 has 3D models. However, those 3D models were rendered into 2D sprite sheets. And as you can see, when we zoom in on, for example, the shield, when we look at the specific frame, when the shield is facing away from the character, or sorry, from the player, you'll see that there is a dark band horizontally going over that shield. That is actually not black pixels, that's a transparency channel. And that gap will be filled up by the sprite of the arm holding the shield. And that's very particular for these kinds of, uh, of sprite sheets. The reason that we need that is because when the player is moving around, turning around, we can't have constantly the order, render order of those sprite sheets change. And the only way to make sure that without changing the render order of the sprites, the animation and the art stays correct is by making sure that whatever overlaps, whatever body part or whatever item part overlaps with the rest is alpha clipped out of whatever is in the background so that thereby you get these special sprite sheets that exactly overlap and together form one entity. So now that you know how the sprite sheets are set up, and if you wanna learn more about that, you have to Google it. I Googled it myself, found a couple of good resources for Blender 2.5, but not for something reason, but I mean, Blender can do that. Just have to figure out how, I guess. I'm not that much of a Blender guru. If you just wanna practice, these sprite sheets are linked down in the description below under the assets category. They're CC BY 3.0 license, so that means you can easily commercially use them in your project, as long as you give the right attributions to the artist. So definitely nothing stopping you from practicing today and i guess let's get into the video let's get coding and let's get some stuff done before we get ahead of ourselves let's first have a look at the player character and the player scene if you don't know how to create an animated 2d character out of a, a sprite sheet with some movement i'll put some links down to some out of my tutorials where you can learn all of that the only difference that's gonna come in with this particular character is that we got four different sprite sheets for the four sprite sheets that I've just shown you. If we have a look at the animation player, you'll see that now we are animating all four of those sprites in the same animation. So for each of these animations, we have four of these tracks and that is for every single of these sprite sheets. Now, if I, for example, were to go to the um, chest sprite sheet and I were to go to my assets, my art, my isometric hero, and were, for example, to replace the metal with the leather sprite sheet, you can see that now we can change that equipment. Of course, we have to do that through code, and I guess that's what's up next. To get started with the code, let's first do a quick recap of what we've done in the previous six tutorials regarding equipment data. I'm right here on the player data singleton, the singleton that tracks all the dynamic data, the changeable data of the player, which includes the equipment it currently wears. That is stored in the equipment data dictionary, which has a dictionary key for every single equipment slot and then stores the equipment ID or the item ID of the particular item that is currently equipped. In the past, in the previous tutorials, we were changing this dictionary directly from the equipment slot and inventory slot drag and drop functionality that we programmed in. We're gonna change that in this episode. We are gonna make sure that this equipment data is only changed by a function here on the same singleton, which is the function change equipment. That function is going to be verifying if the equipment that is being changed is part of a set of visible equipment pieces. We have in this tutorial only four sprite sheets and I don't even really wanna mess around with the head. So I'm just gonna be taking three of these sprite sheets and only when one of those three equipment slots change, we are going to be updating the appearance of our character. Now, of course you can expand on this system in your own game. It's not like there's a limitation here. I'm currently just limited by the assets that I've got freely available to myself. And I'm not gonna create an entire 
uh, 3D character in Blender for just this tutorial. That's a little bit over the top. So on our change equipment function, which is new, we're going to push the equipment slot and the item ID that we are fitting in there. Remember, item ID in this case can be a number, an integer representing an item, or it can be null if we unequip something. So we're going to check in the game data, which has two new variables, if that equipment slot that we are equipping in is part of the visible equipment. Now, how we do that is in game data. So that is the single turn with the static data that does not change. These are just facts about the game. We have two new variables, visible equipment, which is an array of every equipment slot that would need its appearance updated. And we also have a new variable naked gear because in my case when you push or unequip an item and the item ID becomes null, well null is not something we can easily load into a texture. So uh, you could but then you will be invisible. So we also need to tell the game which equipment it needs to load when it receives null. So for the chest we're going to go with the clothes uh, asset and as you can see here in my asset list uh, clothes is uh, one of the singletons so I can't show you like that. If I were to drag it here, you can see that's just uh, close as if you are just a fresh, uh, fresh at game start. And for the main hand and off hand, well, we can of course simply make that null when the character is running around without a shield or a weapon. That still makes perfect sense. So with those two variables on our game data, back to our player data, we can check the visible equipment, those chest, main hand, off hand, if the equipment slot we are receiving is one of those. If that is the case, it means that we have to update the appearance. In that case, we're first going to define the player node, and then on that player node, we're going to run the function on equipment changed, which is of course also a new function, and we push that equipment slot and the item ID. Then finally, we of course have to update this data, so then we're going to take the equipment data that is the variable we're going to search for the equipment slot uh, dictionary key and then we're going to push the item id that we received now of course in order for this to work and in order to make sure we're not changing this dictionary directly anymore we have to update both the equipment slot and inventory slot code so going or starting with our equipment slot here on the bottom where we update the texture and the data of the target slot that we have dropped something into, we were first updating the player data, equipment data directly. We are now going to take out this line and I've already prepared a new line of code where we now call that change equipment function. We're pushing the target equipment slot, so that will be the particular slot, chest, arms, uh, gloves, hands, whatever, and then we are going to push the item ID that's going to go in there. Now there's one more place where we have to change this. This will not be used often, but here we have another one. So also here I'll implement this new line of code, remove the old one. And on the inventory slot, this one is important because when we drag something from the equipment panel to the inventory, then the drop data function where we're making these changes on there are going to be on the inventory slot. Now, if that is a swap of an item or we're simply only unequipping an item, also from the inventory slot, we would have to update that data. So that's right here where we update the equipment data. We, of course, are going to delete this and we're going to implement this new line of code, which is now a function call with that data um, so that that function can run. So now whenever we're changing equipment, by changing those three lines, we are running on our singleton the change equipment function, and that is gonna call the player nodes to actually visually make that equipment change. So now switching over to the code of the player. This is the code that sits on the kinematic body of the player scene itself. Here we have our unhandled input and the movement loop with various animations calls. This is all from the tutorials I've linked in the description below. You probably already have this or something similar uh, and otherwise you can look those videos up. On this code, we also find our new function on equipment change that receives that equipment slot and item ID. We have to define two things. We have to define the name of the texture we need to be using and the sprite sheet object that we are going to be loading into our sprite 2D nodes. We first check if the item ID we receive is null. If that's the case, it means that we have unequipped something. When we unequip something, we have to look into that naked gear dictionary that I showed you earlier in the tutorial that sits on the game data singleton to determine what the name of that texture is going to be. Now, that is going to be close in case of the chest equipment slot and null in case of main hand and off hand. 
If, however, the item ID is not null, it is actually an integer and it is actually an item we are equipping, then we're going to get the sprite texture, the name, out of the item data. Now, that is new and let me show you that. This is the item data table that we have been using over the last seven or so episodes that we export into JSON and then load into Godot. On here, I have added an extra column, column C here, sprite texture. And I've done so because you probably don't want to make a sprite sheet for every single unique item in your game. For example, in my case, I have an old sword, a common sword, and an epic sword. But I'm not going to create a different sprite sheet for every single one of those, especially not if I add another 10 or so swords. So, in my case, I'm going to use the short sword texture for the old and common sword and I'm going to use the long sword texture for the epic sword. I've also added a couple of others so for example for steel armor, leather armor, shield and for the axe for those of you that are watching these tutorials on mobile I've added for the axe the staff texture just to make sure that it stands out a little bit more from all the uh, swords so you can see the actual change happen. So with that data, switching back to Godot, we can go into game data, item data. We can take that item ID and retrieve the actual sprite texture column to then determine the name of the texture. Now, once we've got that, we have to check if the texture is null, which could happen in case we're unequipping a main hand or off hand. In that case, the sprite sheet is also going to be null. Otherwise, though, the sprite sheet, we're going to load that from our assets in our isometric hero folder, which I got right here in the file manager. And here you can see all the various sprite sheets that come out of that assets, which again, you can download. Link is in the description. We push that texture name .png. Now we got it loaded. Then finally, we get the node equipment slot. And as I have named my sprite sheets, chest, main and offhand head, exactly the same as I've named the keys in our dictionary. So when we go back to the code to our player data, you see chest, main hand, off hand, same capitalization. By doing so, I can very easily get the node equipment slot without having to change anything or look anything up. And we're gonna set that texture to the sprite sheet. Now, when I hit play, we should be able to change some things around. Now, the first thing you'll notice, and that's because we haven't done that yet, it's gonna be the second part of this tutorial, is that when we load the game, the uh, data doesn't load properly. Right now you can see that we have a leather armor equipped, but we don't see that leather armor right here. However, when we equip, for example, our metal armor, we see that our metal armor equips just like with leather. And if we unequip, you can see that the cloth asset is being used. If we switch around some swords or we unequip a shield or we unequip our epic sword, then that is going to be long sword textures for those of you that are watching on desktop and have it zoomed on or zoomed in. You can see that texture change as well. And just like that, we can change equipment. All we got to do is now fix the starting equipment. That's not necessarily the starting equipment at the start of the game. But as soon as the player loads the game in, we need to read the currently equipped uh, items in the equipment data to make sure that whenever the game loads in, the player is represented with a fair representation of his or her equipment. So for the last part, that, that's actually super easy. Right here on that same player code, we have here on the top under the ready function, I've already prepared this. This is where we equip the character at the startup and for every slot in game data visible equipment. So we are running over the chest, main hand and off hand. We are going to call the on equipment changed function that sits in this script itself. We're gonna push that slot that we went over and we're gonna look up in our player data, equipment data, what is actually equipped in that slot. And of course, if you connect these tutorials up to a save and load system and you make sure that, that this equipment data is then loaded in whenever the player opens up the game again, starts a new game session based on a previous save file, then of course all that equipment is going to be there and you can load the appearance of the character correctly. To give that a quick try, uh, we are currently having an axe and a shield, I believe, but with no equipment. And as you can see, now when I load the game, we probably have our cloth sprite sheet and not the leather sprite sheet we had just a moment ago. For that, we would really have to equip a leather piece first. That was it for today, guys. If this video was help you, let me know in the comment section down below. Smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss out on the next video. 
I think I'm pretty much done with this equipment and inventory mini series. In the end, it wasn't so much a mini series after all. I think we've done seven episodes in total. If you would like to see anything more that I built on top of this, please let me know. I would love to do another episode on it. But in the meantime, I'm also going to be thinking about what the next series is going to be. I got a couple of ideas, but I'm not going to spoil that yet. So uh, stay tuned for more. And by next week, you should know what's going to be going on for the next couple of weeks. I hope to see you then, and until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.